The seminaries and institutes of religion present stories from the Book of Mormon. Within the pages of the Book of Mormon is an account of a group of Nephites who desired to return to the land of their first inheritance in the Promised Land. Under the leadership of a fair and righteous man named Zenith, the group entered the land they were seeking only to find it in possession of the Lamanites. Zenith went to the king of the Lamanites and the king covenanted with Zenith and his followers that they might possess the land. Now this he did, unknown to Zenith at the time, that the Lamanites might bring them into bondage at some future time. Zenith ruled righteously over the people and they prospered in the land and they raised all manner of grain and fruit of every kind. The women spun fine linen, and they raised and tended their flocks. And it came to pass that the Lamanites began to come upon them, but trusting in the Lord, the people of Zenith repelled them and drove them out of the land. Now, this is the account of the son of Zenith, how the people became corrupt under his wicked rule, and how the Lord scourges those who fail to remember his commandments. And now it came to pass that Zenith conferred the kingdom upon Noah, one of his sons. Therefore Noah began to reign in his stead and he did not walk in the ways of his father. For behold, he did not keep the commandments of God, but he did walk after the desires of his own heart, and he had many wives and concubines, and he did cause his people to commit sin, and do that which was abominable in the sight of the Lord. Yea, and they did commit whoredoms and all manner of wickedness. And he laid a tax of one-fifth part of all they possessed, a fifth part of their gold and of their silver, and a fifth part of their ziff and of their copper and of their brass and iron, and a fifth part of their fatlings and also a fifth part of all their grain. And all this did he take to support himself and his wives and his concubines and also his priests and their wives and their concubines. Thus he had changed the affairs of the kingdom, for he put down all the priests that had been consecrated by his father and consecrated new ones in their stead, such as were lifted up in the pride of their hearts. Yea, and thus they were supported in their laziness and in their idolatry and in their whoredoms by taxes which King Noah had put upon his people. Thus did the people labor exceedingly to support iniquity. Yea, and they also became idolatrous because they were deceived by the vain and flattering words of the king and priests, for they did speak flattering things unto them. And it came to pass that King Noah built many elegant and spacious buildings, and he ornamented them with fine work of wood and of all manner of precious things, of gold and of silver, and of iron, and of brass, and of ziff, and of copper. And he also built him a spacious palace, and a throne in the midst thereof, all of which was of fine wood, and was ornamented with gold and silver, and with precious things. And he also caused that his workmen should work all manner of fine work within the walls of the temple of fine wood, and of copper, and of brass. And the seats which were set apart for the high priests, which were above all the other seats, he did ornament with pure gold. And he caused a breastwork to be built before them, that they might rest their bodies and their arms upon, while they should speak lying and vain words to his people. And it came to pass that he built a tower near the temple, yea, a very high tower, even so high that he could stand upon the top thereof and overlook the land of Shilom, and also the land of Shemlon, which was possessed by the Lamanites, 
and he could even look over all the land round about. And it came to pass that he caused many buildings to be built in the land Shilom, and he caused a great tower to be built on the hill north of the land Shilom, which had been a resort for the children of Nephi at the time they fled out of the land. And thus he did do with the riches which he obtained by the taxation of his people. And it came to pass that he placed his heart upon his riches, and he spent his time in riotous living with his wives and his concubines. And so did also his priests spend their time with harlots. And it came to pass that he planted vineyards round about in the land, and he built wine presses and made wine in abundance. And therefore he became a wine bibber and also his people. And it came to pass that the Lamanites began to come in upon his people upon small numbers and to slay them in their fields and while they were tending their flocks. And King Noah sent guards round about the land to keep them off, but he did not send a sufficient number. And the Lamanites came upon them and killed them and drove many of their flocks out of the land. Thus the Lamanites began to destroy them and to exercise their hatred upon them. And it came to pass that King Noah sent his armies against them, and they were driven back, or they drove them back for a time. Therefore they returned rejoicing in their spoil. And now because of this great victory, they were lifted up in the pride of their hearts. They did boast in their own strength, saying, that their fifty could stand against thousands of the Lamanites. And thus they did boast and did delight in blood and the shedding of the blood of their brethren. And this because of the wickedness of their king and priests. And it came to pass that there was a man among them whose name was Abinadi. And he went forth among them and began to prophesy, saying, Behold, thus saith the Lord, and thus hath he commanded me, saying, Go forth and say unto this people, Thus saith the Lord, Woe be unto this people, for I have seen their abominations and their wickedness and their whoredoms, and except they repent, I will visit them in mine anger. And Abinadi related many things that the Lord said would come to pass if the people continued in their iniquity. Now it came to pass that when Abinadi had spoken these words unto them, they were wroth with him and sought to take away his life. But the Lord delivered him out of their hands. Now when King Noah had heard of the words which Abinadi had spoken unto the people, he was also wroth. Who is Abinadi, that I and my people should be judged of him? Or who is the Lord, that shall bring upon my people such great affliction? I command you to bring Abinadi hither, that I may slay him. For he has said these things, that he might stir up my people to anger one with another, and to raise contentions among my people. Therefore I will slay him. Now the eyes of the people were blinded, Therefore they hardened their hearts against the words of Abinadi, and they sought from that time forward to take him. And King Noah hardened his heart against the word of the Lord, and he did not repent of his evil doings. Now after the space of two years, they found Abinadi as he came into the land in disguise to prophesy among the people, and they took him and carried him bound before the king. Behold, we have brought a man before thee who has prophesied evil concerning thy people, and saith that God will destroy them. And he also prophesieth evil concerning thy life, and saith that thy life shall be as a garment in a furnace of fire. And again he saith that thou shalt be as a stock, even as a dry stock of the field, which is run over by the beasts and trodden under foot. And again he saith that thou shalt be as the blossoms of a thistle, which when it is fully ripe, 
If the wind bloweth, it is driven forth upon the face of the land. And he pretendeth the Lord hath spoken it. And he saith, All this shall come upon thee, except thou repent, and this because of thine iniquities. And now, O king, behold, we are guiltless, and thou, O king, hast not sinned. Therefore, this man has lied concerning you, and he has prophesied in vain. And behold, we are strong. We shall not come into bondage, or be taken captive by our enemies. Yea, and thou hast prospered in the land, and thou shalt also prosper. Behold, here is the man. We deliver him into thy hands. Thou mayest do with him as seemeth thee good. King Nor caused that Abinadi should be cast into prison, and he commanded that the priests should gather themselves together that he might hold a council with them what he should do with him. And it came to pass that they said unto the king, Bring him hither, that we may question him. And the king commanded that he should be brought before them. And they began to question him, that they might cross him, that thereby they might have wherewith to accuse him. But he answered them boldly, and withstood all their questions, yea, to their astonishment. For he did withstand them in all their questions, and did confound them in all their words. And Abinadi stood up to them and rebuked them for not living up to the law of Moses and for leading the people from the truth. He related to them many things that they willfully neglected to teach and to live. He also prophesied of many things that would occur in the future saying that they ought to tremble and repent of their sins, and that only in and through Christ could they be saved. And now it came to pass that when Abinadi had finished these sayings, that the king commanded that the priests should take him and cause that he should be put to death. And it came to pass that he suffered death by fire. Yea, having been put to death, because he would not deny the commandments of God, having sealed the truth of his words by his death. And now, behold, the forces of the king were small, having been reduced, and there began to be a division among the remainder of the people. And the lesser part began to breathe out threatenings against the king, and there began to be a great contention among them. And now there was a man among them whose name was Gideon. And he, being a strong man and an enemy to the king, therefore he drew his sword and swore in his wrath that he would slay the king. And it came to pass that he fought with the king, and when the king saw that he was about to overpower him, he fled. And ran and got upon the tower which was near the temple. And Gideon pursued after him, and was about to get upon the tower to slay the king. And the king cast his eyes round about toward the land of Shemlin, and behold, the army of the Lamanites were within the borders of the land. And now the king cried out in the anguish of his soul, saying, Gideon, spare me, for the Lamanites are upon us, and they will destroy us, yea, they will destroy my people. And now the king was not so much concerned about his people as he was about his own life. Nevertheless, Gideon did spare his life. And the king commanded the people that they should flee before the Lamanites, and he himself did go before them, and they did flee into the wilderness with their women and their children. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did pursue them, and did overtake them, and began to slay them. Now it came to pass that the king commanded them that all the men should leave their wives and their children and flee before the Lamanites. Now there were many that would not leave them, but had rather stay and perish with them. And the rest left their wives and their children and fled. And it came to pass that those who fled had sworn in their hearts that they would return to the land of Nephi. 
And if their wives and their children were slain, and also those that had tarried with them, that they would seek revenge and also perish with them. And the king commanded them that they should not return, and they were angry with the king, and caused that he should suffer even unto death by fire. And thus the wicked king Noah died, even in the manner he had caused the prophet Abinadi to suffer death, and his pleasures came to naught. But trusting in the Lord, the people of Zenith repelled them and drove them out of the land. Now, this is the account of the son of Zenith, how the people became corrupt under his wicked rule, and how the Lord scourges those who fail to remember his commandments. The seminaries and institutes of religion present stories from the Book of Mormon. Within the pages of the Book of Mormon is an account of a group of Nephites who desired to return to the land of their first inheritance in the Promised Land, under the leadership of a fair and righteous man named in future time. Zenith ruled righteously over the people, and they prospered in the land, and they raised all manner of grain and fruit of every kind. The women spun fine linen, and they raised and tended their flocks. And it came to pass that the Lamanites began to come upon them. Zenith, the group entered the land they were seeking, only to find it in possession of the Lamanites. Zenith went to the king of the Lamanites, and the king covenanted with Zenith and his followers that they might possess the land. Now this he did, unknown to Zenith at the time, that the Lamanites might bring them into bondage at some... And now it came to pass that Zenith conferred the kingdom upon Noah, one of his sons. Therefore Noah began to reign in his stead, and he did not walk in the ways of his father. 